Hey, it's, uh, it's Coach Josh, and we are live from the quarantine. And uh, today we are going to do a, uh, a metabolic mobility day, so it's going to be fun. We're going to do a lot of stretches, and then we'll, we'll get our heart rate up at the end. But I don't know about you, I'm sore. The last couple of days have been killer. I can feel all the squats and lunges uh, and all the ab training. So uh, I'm, I'm feeling it all over my body. So I'm excited to loosen up a little bit and um, get some stretching. And um, the, uh, my message for today is actually from uh, my man, Victor Frankel. If you've ever uh, read his book, Man's Search for Meaning, it's only about 130 pages. It's um, a little bit about his story during the Holocaust and uh, being a, uh, uh, a, uh, a, 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 a camp survivor. And uh, he talks about a little bit about what his life was like in there and then goes on to talk about how he's evolved this um, theory around how we figure out what our purpose is. And uh, uh, I, I like that um, uh, uh, one of his quotes is, um, life is, unbear is not unbearable because of circumstance. Life is unbearable because of lack of purpose and meaning. And uh, the, a lot of times when we go through our, our lives, whether it's go to school or work or or, um, or, or do any of the things that we are, um, are, are supposed to do, um, we, ha we have a hard time figuring out who we are amidst that story. And, and one of my coaches told me that your, your struggle is your story, your mess is your message. And right now in this moment, we're all going through a pretty, pretty big and, um, and, and profound struggle in a lot of ways. And inside of it, there's, there's all kinds of lessons for us. There's all kinds of messages for us. There's all kinds of um, uh, development for us to go through and, and discover what our meaning is through, uh, through all of this um, that we're going through right now. And we're learning things about ourselves. We're learning how we deal with change. We learn um, with, uh, when things are stripped away, maybe we, can, we have the opportunity to replace some of the old routines with things that we care about and become that person that we have been wanting to become for a long time, but couldn't because of all the things that were getting in the way. So um, I, uh, I just want to, uh, I guess, pay homage to Viktor Frankl and giving us the opportunity to find uh, meaning in the struggle and uh, uh, remind us all today that we have that same opportunity. So hopefully, uh, you're, uh, you've already got some lessons and some reflections on that, uh, but if you don't, you can think about it while we uh, stretch out. So you're going to need a mat today. Um, I got a mat back there. Uh, we're going to uh, loosen up from head to toe. So I'm going to do. We're going to start with a shin box position. So I'm here on the ground, chest is up. My hips are over my uh, chest are over my hips. My left leg is forward. My left foot's touching my right knee. And so I'm here, and um, the goal is to stay as vertical and upright as possible. And um, I might prop onto the floor because I'm a little tight today, but we'll see how it goes. The goal is you're going to lift up that foot off the ground, lock out that leg. You're going to bring that hip or that foot all the way out with that leg locked until it's in front of you. And you're going to bring it all the way back and you're going to place it right where you were. Now, I'm leaning a lot, so I might use the ground for support. I'm going to do that one more time, breathing the whole time, lock out that foot, lift up, come right back down. Yes. Let's do it one more time. Oh, if you're getting some snap, crackle, pop, it means you're doing the right thing. Now we're going to switch. So you're here. You're just going to rotate so that your feet are facing the other direction. I'm up, locking out that leg, bring it back, setting it down. That was one. I'm going to prop here and see if I can't get more out of this. Coming all the way back, that's two. Lock out that leg, come all the way back. Ah, that's three. All right. So from here, we're facing the floor. I'm kicking my knees out. 
and I'm going to squeeze the earth. I'm in the frog position. My toes are pointed out. Butt's as low as I can get it. I'm going to sit back until I feel that tension in my groin. I'm going to squeeze the earth for five, four, three, two, one. And then I'm going to relax and let those knees separate. Take a big breath. I'm going to squeeze again. I'm breathing in through my nose, squeezing the earth, squeezing my abs for five, four, three, two. Sit back. And then I'm going to relax again and let the, that groin rest. And from here, I'm going to push up into the plank. And I'm going to take my knee. I'm going to drop it in between my hands. So I'm right halfway in between my hands with my right knee. My back leg is locked. So I'm going to take that left hip and I'm going to push it towards the floor. And I'm going to feel, I'm feeling a stretch already in my hip. Some of you more limber people might be able to get closer to the ground. Back, back leg is straight. This high hip is pushed to the ground. And I'm going to breathe in through my nose. We're going to take five breaths. In through the nose, feeling up that belly. I can already feel my hip loosening up a little bit. Holy cow, it's tight. Two more breaths. One more breath. I'm up, rotating that leg out, switching it out, dropping that high hip towards the earth, breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. This is my Gosh, this hip feels even tighter than the other hip. Whew. Two more breaths. Keeping that back leg strong. Whew. And then we're on all fours. We're here in the four point position. My hands are pretty close to my knees. I'm going to do some fire hydrants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do five hydrants out and I'm going to keep that leg bent to 90 degrees, pausing just for a second up at the top. When I'm parallel with the uh, hip, I'm going to do five reps. That's three, four, and then Hit that fifth one, and then I'm going to do a big circle from front to back. So I'm reaching forward and back. Three, four, five. And then once I do five, I'm going to reverse that trend, and I'm going to go backwards. Get that knee high. Woo wee! And then I'm going to go to the other side. So we're going to do the same thing with the right side. One second pause at the top. On the fifth one, we're going to turn it into a hip circle, front to back. Four, five, this is much tighter on this side for me. One, two, three, four, five. So the, full, the four point scapular circle, so we just circled our hips. Now we're going to circle our shoulder blades. What does that mean? We're going to be here in the four point, and I'm going to go all the way forward. All the way back together, all the way down, hips towards the uh, shoulders towards the hip bones, and then 
protracted completely, rounding out the back. So I'm going to go these big circles, but the elbows are going to stay straight, and the shoulders are going to draw a big, big clock. So you're trying not to bend your neck, trying to stay neutral, rotating through. Once you've done five, you're going to go the other way. It's kind of clunky. This is not how we usually move. So it's going to be a little bit challenging. Wow. Holy neck screen. Or, yes, screening neck. OK, from those four-point scap circles, we're going to do a half-kneeling shoulder circle. So you're going to be on one knee, one foot out in front of you, laces on the back side, pushing into the floor, pushing all the way through the front, all the way through the back foot. I'm going to reach forward all the way through, all the way up over my head. So when I get here, rib cage is down, shoulders all the way up to the sky. I'm going to rotate that humerus like a rotisserie chicken all the way back, my palms facing up, shoulders stretching down away from my ear, coming back to the floor. Then I'm going to reverse that trend. All the way back, here, through, up at the top, pushing through. When I get here, I'm pushing my fingertips all the way away from my rib cage, all the way away from my shoulder, until I get back down to the bottom. Now we're going to do the same thing with the other side. Lead foot into the ground, back foot back. Feeling that tension in the abs, tension in that hip. We're stretching that quad, reaching all the way forward. Get rib cage down, breathing into the belly. Letting that shoulder come all the way away from the rib cage, getting nice and long. Up high. Rotating, pushing that, slamming that invisible door shut back behind you. Elbow or the uh, shoulder drifts away from the ear on the way down. Coming back to the center, going all the way back through. Rotate the arm back up, bicep by the ear. Forward again. Notice the body doesn't like to stretch. I mean, my body's resisting me in a lot of these. That's OK. We're not going to force it, but we are going to lean against it. Whew. All right, that shoulder circle going into downward dog. So this our downward dog is going to be Kicked up in this A-frame position. Feet are going to be about the width of maybe two feet. So here, my uh, bicep is by my ear. I'm pedaling out, rotating the elbows in towards the rib cage, trying to stretch those calves. And then I'm going to do a dive bomb here. Inhale, coming up to that upward facing dog. Exhale, come back through. Pedal again, pumping those feet. Coming through again. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, back up. Then I'm going to come back into the plank and rest. Whew. All right. Now we're going to continue to warm up those shoulders. We're going to do, we're on, the, we're on our uh, mats here on the ground, pushing our knees apart, squeezing our glutes. We're going to reach out with our arms, thumbs pointed back. We're going to do small circles, rotations back. Elbows stay locked, so we want this movement to come from the shoulder, not the elbow or the wrist. Coming through, core is tight. Now we're going to reverse that circle, 
Again, pushing those knuckles out away. I'm trying to touch the walls on either side of my living room, making it look good, feel good. Whew, tension in the biceps, forearms, maybe in the neck and the shoulder. From here, I'm gonna go into the sideline archer. So I'm gonna drop down to the ground. My knees are stacked. Try to get my knees here on the mat. My knees are stacked. I'm going to inhale as I draw that bow, follow my hand with my eyes, turning my head away with my hand, exhaling, coming back out. Inhale. Exhale. If you're disciplined, you can keep your knees stacked evenly over, over each other. We're doing five on each side. Inhale. Inhale again. Exhale. We're going to switch to the other side. Inhale. I'm rotating back, making sure to my knees aren't moving as much as possible. If you feel stiff, you can go ahead and spend a little more time in that archer up at the top. <sighs> Breathing in. Awesome. So we're going to do some kneeling neck circles before we stand up and do some fun standing stuff. So I'm going to punch my uh, thumbs out, knuckles down to the floor, and I'm going to draw a big circle with my chin. So I'm going to go out, up, not in a hurry. You don't want to force your neck to do anything. Just want to notice where you're tight. We're going to do five reps counterclockwise. Five reps clockwise. Just reversing order. Don't forget to breathe, keeping those knuckles pushed to the floor. Whew. Guitar strings there in the neck. We're gonna open up the wrists a little bit. We're on all fours. I'm gonna gently bob forward over my wrist just rocking until I feel some stretching and coming back. Just rocking back and forth, not gonna force anything. That wrist has enough pressure on it with your weight. We're just leaning into that stretch just a little bit. We're going back and forth five times. And then we're going to take your index finger, you're gonna rotate it all the way around until it points back at your body. And then I'm gonna set my hand down that way and I'm gonna gently rock again. I'm gonna feel the stretch in my biceps and in my forearms. Rocking back and forth, feeling it again. We're gonna do five reps here. Excellent. Now for one of my favorites, we're gonna do the Bretzel stretch. So there's a lot going on here, so follow along with me. We're gonna stretch everything all at once. I'm on the ground and I'm taking my, I'm on my left side now. So I'm gonna take my left hand and I'm gonna grip my right leg. Taking my right leg and I'm gripping my, uh, or my left leg with my right arm 
and I'm gripping my left leg. And then the last piece is I'm gonna try and pull my right shoulder to the floor. Oh. So I'm inhaling as I go. Whew. Oh yeah. Breathing in through the nose. Oh. Oh. So I feel it in my quad, I feel it in my shoulder, my chest. Whew. Yeah, one more big breath. Oh, huh. yeah. Now we're gonna go to the other side. I can't even see it. So I'm on my right side, gripping my left leg with my right hand, gripping my left foot with my right foot, or my left, right foot with my left hand. Then I'm gonna try and touch my left shoulder to the floor. Five big breaths. Time slows down in this stretch. I don't know why. One more big breath. Oh. Yes. Okay, now we're standing up. Now that we're nice and loose, so we're gonna do the IWYT, and we're gonna do this exercise from the bent position. So I'm gonna be hinged over. I'm gonna be in this, uh, for the eye, I'm gonna be in the ski jumper position. So my elbows are gonna be alongside my rib cage, palms facing up, and then I'm gonna go into this eye, eye posture overhead. So I'm reaching directly overhead. Elbows are closed in. I'm gonna go back and forth. We're gonna do five reps with each. Nice breathing pace. Elbows, elbows stay straight. Warming up those shoulders. Now I'm going to go into the Y. So the Y, I'm just going to go chopping at the knee, reaching overhead and out to 45 degrees. Long spine, palms facing in the whole time. This is really good for the shoulder. It turns on some trap muscles that really don't turn on any other way. This is a very beneficial exercise. We're going to do five here. And they're going to roll right into the W. And the W, same position, but I'm just coming out. I'm making a W with my body, so elbows below the shoulders, wrists above the elbows. We're here. Five reps. Nice breathing pace. And then the T, so coming straight out. Breathing pace, squeezing their shoulder blades together at the top. Hoo wee. 
so much good stuff. Now we're going to do some squats. This will really uh, get everybody's heart rate going. Feet are going to be shoulder width apart. I'm going to drop down into that squat, grip the inside of my shoe, chest is up. I'm going to inhale as I reach up, exhale as I come back down, inhale as I reach up, exhale as I come back down. I'm going to stand up with my chin to my chest. So tucking chin to chest, exhale, that's one. Inhale as I reach, inhale, exhale as I stand up. Keep that chin tucked, Bob. Inhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale. That was three. We're only going to do five. Chest up chin to chest, one more, inhale, inhale, exhale, ha ha, very good, all right, now we're going to do our walk around T-spine rotation, so we're going to stretch our groin, get into our lunge, double wide stance, Dropping down, palms in line with the heel, reaching up to the sky. I'm gonna walk all the way out, come right back in. Uh, that's one. Coming back, reaching up, breathing pace. Back. All the way back. Feels good. I feel this stretching my groin, hamstring, upper back. Feel this in my abs. Feel this everywhere. Is that three or four? Going on five. All right, finish this last rep up. Whew. Excellent. Whew. Shake it off. Hey, those uh, mobility sessions are, sessions are just as important as any of the other training that you do during the week. In fact, it's probably more important now than ever. For one, we have to compensate for all of the, um, the, the tension that we're accumulating through our habits and our breathing and all the stuff that's going on and uh, the, the, the constant sitting. And two, that blood flow through all of the muscles in the body speeds up recovery from the training that you did do earlier this week. So uh, you, you gotta have those mobility days, those recovery days. If you're a yoga person, if you're a Pilates person, you already know what I'm talking about. But if you're a weightlifter and uh, you haven't been getting that st those stretches then because they're, uh, they're just not worth it to you, you gotta put in that extra time. So continue to do the, do the work every day. The daily habit is, is, is important now, is more important now than it has ever been. So you've got to continue to do the, that daily boring work so that you continue to uh, enhance your posture and continue to grow through this challenge, continue to build muscle, burn fat, and bring forth the warrior within.